Hello there. Thank you, everyone, for coming to this talk. Uh, and the talk is going to be about uh, hunting and doing malware. And for, for this purpose, we are going to, to use virus total. And, and also, it's my first time at Secure. So thank you for inviting me to the conference. And, and I hope that you enjoy the talk as much as I enjoy, in, enjoy doing it. Uh, the talk is going to be split into different sections because uh, firstly, we're going to, to talk about the common trends in Android malware and how, how, it's, how users are being infected today. Then we are also going to explore some malware, but not, not in depth, but the basics that we need to know, how they work and how they manage to get into Google Play. And then we will also cover how to hunt this malware, but we are not going to use the typical methods of static analysis, and instead we're going to be based on dynamic analysis for these, for these searches. So my background, uh, and my name is Fernando. I work for VirusTotal as a software engineer, but basically my, my job consists on developing sandboxes and kernel development, and my background has been malware analysis. So I've been working on malware analysis for for years, especially uh, working with analyzing banking malware in Android devices and, and Windows. You can contact me for anything that you need, uh, either queries, doubts, or questions. You can send them to my email, or you can contact me through Twitter if you wish. But don't worry, because at the end of the talk, I will have uh, the email in case anyone wants to contact me. And the first thing that we, we are going to take a look at is the common trends of Android malware and how it is managing to infect, uh, how attackers are managing to infect users. Because the usual ways of, of, uh, of using a rogue website to get the user infected uh, are not as effective as before because Google Play has also new controls to avoid getting users infected. So Google introduced Play Protect, which objective is to actually flag the malicious applications, and in case they are installed in the user's device, they are going to be removed automatically. The user won't have to do anything at all. It will be uh, automatically ma managed by Play Protect. And in case that the, the sample has been flagged and you find it, uh, Play Protect won't allow you to actually install it. So this. This has been added as some layer to prevent users from being infected uh, from the common threads. However, attackers have managed to pass these things, and we are going to see what the usual methodology is. Also, the permission system has been tweaked. It's not as easy as before, where you had a list of permissions, and then you managed to get the user to accept this list. And um, voila, yeah, you, you just infected the user with the necessary permissions. Now you need you have a more granular design of permissions, and the important permissions require confirmation from the user. So for users, it gets more and more suspicious when an application asks for permissions that are unrelated to the usage that they are going to do. So if they download a, a, te a textbook a textbook application and they get the camera permission, it might be strange, or the SMS permission. And also, users uh, don't actually bother turning off the unknown sources feature because they don't actually need it. They just go to the store that the phone has installed, and they go to that application. However, there's still many users who run outdated devices or that are curious or want cracked software, and they turn this, so turn this feature off. And then from other markets or either uh, other websites, they download APKs and they install them on the device, and they are prone to being infected by uh, attackers. The last six months of malware, uh, is, this is a small pie, pie cake that I did, but uh, th there's more. I just covered the, the main ones. And the main activity on Android malware is targeting, SM, is targeting the SMS features. So SMS fraud, SMS hijacking applications, uh, SMS senders, they are into the SMS fraud category. And then we also have banking trojans and adware, which are quite profitable. And due to recent open source banking trojans for Android, this, uh, this percentage has expanded 
uh, since some years before. And then we also have fake installers, routing and ransomware. We can find fake installers or still on Google Play, but they are, they are being deleted. The routing applications, they are harder to find. Uh, they are still available, but if you have your device updated, it's not as interesting for an attacker uh, as adware or SMS fraud will be. And then there's also ransomware, but it's not really as, it's not really being as effective as these being on other systems such as Windows devices. And the thing is that today, uh, uploading malware to the Play Store is not as easy as it was before. Uh, before you could more or less hide the application and make it invisible to, to the bouncer, but now the bouncer has been improving and, and it can easily detect applications that are obviously malware. So attackers have been adapting to this and they have, uh, they have used droppers as means to get users infected. This way they can actually uh, get, be, get, behind the, get behind the bouncer, which is the, the sandbox in Google is running before approving applications. And after certain circumstances, these samples will trigger, these droppers will trigger and they will get the real payload. And due to these certain circumstances, which could be uh, installed applications, it could be uh, features enabled, or it could, be also, it could also be uh, usage time or IP addresses, it won't really get the payload. And we will, I will explain how already, already seen droppers actually work and how the, how the decision tree is doing before executing the real payload. And also there's many users who don't actually want to update to, to the recent versions or don't or are not able to do that. So for example, uh, many users uh, think that their uh, the smartphone will slow down just because they are updating their device or they may be thinking that or, or they may not be allowed to update it because their provider, their, their phone is not updating anymore. But the device does what they need so they keep their outdated version. And the thing is that for older versions of Android, there's, there's very important attacks that have been demonstrated and they have been used. We, and they are inside, well, they are covered in a group called Group and Dagger, uh, Cloak and Dagger. And basically, the Cloak and Dagger consists of overlay attacks, and they exploit uh, Android design capabilities to actually uh, render another fake screen over the user's screen over the user's applications. And this will also allow attackers to K-log users because they could more or less, uh, they, could place a, they could place an overlay over your keyboard and then using the coordinates that you have been pushing, uh, they could get what you have been typing. This has been uh, effective until around Android 7 and mainly used by banking applications because uh, what they do is that they render a fake overlay over your bank application, and then you enter your details, but you're not into your real application. You are into an overlay. And main, uh, the main families that have been using this type of uh, technique have been, has been Bankbot, Extobot, and Red Alert. And as we can see, this, I, I took this very recent uh, distribution chart and the thing is that the, great, the vast majority of users are still running Android 7 or 7.1 or lower. There's a very few percentage of people running Android 8. And the thing is that, the thing is that, oh, it's not included. I mean, like, I, I, I took it from the, from, the, from the Google website, so <laughs> that's as far as I could get. So up to Android, I don't know if you can see, probably smaller. So uh, these attacks are effective until Android 7 1.2. So if a user gets infected by a banking trojan using any of these techniques, they are actually vulnerable to them. <laughs> and also, the, the meaning behind SMS fraud applications is that many, ap many websites and many applications still use SMS as a means of confirmation of logins. So if you're logging into, let's say, Booking or any hotels application, and you have the second factor authentication enabled, they will send you a code to your SMS inbox. And if they have hijacked your inbox, they have the access code to it. 
So all they need is your is control your inbox. And also it allows them to actually spread easily because they can just read read your agenda agenda and then send an SMS to all your contacts in order to spread. So the, the capabilities of spreading is exponential in this case. Uh, okay. Well, this happened because I, I was told to do 16 per, uh, 16 per 9, but it's 4 per 3, so it changed. <laughs> There's three main families in banking malware, and the most active up to date has been the BankBot one because it was open source, and due to it being open source, many people have been modifying it, and, and it's very easy to set up for any newcomer. So uh, the common features is that Red Alert, Exobot, and, and BankBot, they all contain SMS hijacking capabilities. And there's also dynamic overlays. However, in BankBot, uh, we also have prison overlay attacks, but I will explain the difference. And uh, Red Alert has been using a smart permission requests. It just, do it just doesn't request permissions to the user like the other Trojans, but rather tries to social engineer the user into giving them the proper permissions. And Red Alert tries to evade uh, other anti known antivirus software, and all of them try to get the device details. Uh, uh, Exobot has a small difference between the other two, and that is that they, they use Twitter as a backup, so in case that your device has lost connection with the command and control because either the government uh, shut it down or because it, it cannot connect to it, it will contact a backup Twitter account with a, with a command and control, an alternative one. And also they include a contact list hijacking. So in case that you are receiving a, a phone call or an SMS from a bank entity and the number is in the list, they will block the incoming call to prevent the user from figuring out what's happening. And, and for this talk, we are gonna focus on BankBot because, uh, because uh, this banking Trojan has made it into Google Play a couple, uh, more than a dozen of times. And I think that it's worth mentioning and studying it. And then we can also find it on, find undetected samples of, of, this, of this malware. So BankBot is basically a banking Trojan, as I have explained it, which contains the SMS capabilities, the GPS tracking capabilities, permission requests, and overlay attacks, and also a remote set of HTML templates, which is hard-coded into the, into the APK, and in the initial versions, it could be changed. Uh, it was published in a Russian, or, or I don't know, I, can, I, don't, I cannot distinguish exactly, but I guess it's Russian, in a Russian forum. It was open source, and it included the client side part of the Trojan and the server side part of the Trojan. So you could set up your command and control with just a few scripts that the user gave. And you could also set up your own Trojan because the user uh, gave the source code of it with an Android Studio project, which you could just build and spread it. And he did it with, he did it aiming at Android 6 and below. And his main objective, or what he said in the forum, is that uh, no other antivirus could detect his Trojan. So this was kind of a proof of, pro, uh, proof of concept, which he made public. <laughs> he explained it with details, everything you had to do to set up this botnet, Including the, including the command and control. He gave you the, the body itself, you had the, the MySQL database you had to build, and you also have the source code of the panel. So all you had to do was find a cheap hosting, and with that cheap hosting, you could just set up your Troya, and you all, the only thing you had to do was infecting users. Uh, the initial uh, infection vector that they have been using uh, it was to use shady websites or redirections to, to, this, to these websites, and they try to tell you that you have an updated Chrome version, Android version, or Flash Player version. For some reason, the Flash Player version, even though you don't need it, it seems very effective because everyone says it. And, and what they do is that you download an APK, and because you think that it is an update, users install it, and the thing is that 
by itself, it cannot run properly, so it will prompt the, the user with the required permissions. So in this case, firstly, it will require the device administration permissions because this way it will be able to, to hide itself from the user and it will make it uh, harder for a regular user to uninstall the application. And probably he will think that the application is not running because you cannot see it in the list unless you go to the applications panel. And what it does is that once it is infected, it will be sending the, okay. Once it is infected, firstly, it will ping the command and control and check if it is alive. And in case it is alive, it will send the OS version, the country, the device. It will check if it is root, because it will be checking so for that. And it will check if there are any target applications installed. Also, uh, in case that the device was not registered in the command and control, it will return the response that the bot was registered, and it will, and it will be sending uh, checks to the device and to the command and control, replying whether it is online, whether it can be reading SMS, etc. And of course, from the command and control, you can send them commands if you need it. Uh, I don't know if you can see, because it's very small, but Initially, uh, initially the Mankin Trojan was very simple because it was not in, it was not intended to uh, be widespread initially. So he just did it as quick as possible, and he added a big switch in which he included many different applications, especially from Eastern Europe. So Russian banks and Ukrainian banks are uh, are present in this in these slides, and. He just checked for the for the package name, and in case you had it installed and you were browsing your phone and you opening the application, once you were once you were opening your application, the first thing that you will see will be a fake login. So, the, what they did was they, was that they wrote HTML templates of every single uh, banking application that they were targeting to, and once the user enter the application, they just stole all the credentials that they could. Because they were, they, for this purpose, they used the cloak and dagger attacks that we mentioned before. And because many users are running outdated uh, devices, this attack was pretty successful. However, uh, in Windows malware, banking trojans are much more sophisticated and usually they don't hard code these things. They are actually obtained remotely and this makes the, the attackers more powerful since they can update the, the spectrum of banks that they want to target. So due to it being, others, due to it being open source, uh, I, re I really broke them. <laughs> due to it being open source, after, after a few weeks of it being released to the public, these targets were not hard-coded into the malware anymore and instead, they were downloaded from the command and control once certain conditions were met. So for analysts, for malware researchers, it was very easy before to retrieve what target, what, what, the, what was the command and control, and also what the applications were being targeted. However, due to this change, it made it more difficult because you could not get the information straightforwardly. So it uses an XLM format to actually get the list of targets, and we can see in this case, well, I'm from Spain, so these banks mostly are from Spain, but other are from, from Finland and from Russia, etc., and from Turkey. And they also try to target bookmarks, so in case you had bookmarks of your bank into your, into your list, they will just uh, overlay your Chrome browser or your device browser. But it was not very effective, so they didn't continue with it. And also, the dropper workflow is one of the interesting parts in here, because this, this mechanism allowed them to bypass the Google Bouncer more than once. And what they did is that they submitted the application to the Google Play Store, and it was not the actual Trojan, but rather a fake application, such as a news aggregator or or a fake videos application, and it didn't work straightforwardly. So firstly, it checked whether third-party applications could be installed on the device, 
and in case it couldn't be installed, it will request it. Uh, it will request to turn down this feature, the unknown sources one. And in case it wouldn't be activated, then it wouldn't run anymore until the next reboot. So this way, the sandbox will be bypassed because you, there's no way you could have figured that out at the beginning. And in any other case, then, if the third-party applications is, uh, can be installed, then the real malware will be downloaded into the device SD card, and then it will display the setup dialog to the user. So the thing is that it managed to pass the Google, the Google Bouncer, and it was available to download into the Play Store, and it was not only once, not two times, not three times, but it could, it could be more than a dozen of times already. And once the user, uh, once the user was infected with this, uh, there's no way, there's there's no way it could be fixed because it was not into the into the scope of Google Play at that time. And the social engineering method that it, that the dropper used includes trying to get the user to trigger that, so it will trigger the content resolver for non-market applications, and I will tell the user, please give me the permission to. Uh, to install app applications from unknown sources. Then it will download, given the certain conditions were met, it will download an application, and with this name, it could be randomly, but this sample was ferk.apk into the SD card, and then it will open it to install it. So the thing is that how can we gather these samples? Because I mentioned before, that at the beginning, it was rather easy to get these samples uh, through static analysis because the information was hard-coded and not obfuscated at all because it was a newly open-source Trojan. However, once it became more a more advanced Trojan, uh, it, it became more difficult to get the information through static analysis. So for this, we're gonna be using the dynamic uh, behavior of these samples. So this is from the I don't know if you have seen it, but already in various total, there is information not only for, from the static analysis, but also from the behavior. And the Android applications are included into this behavior. I'll show them to you later. And by seeing the dynamic analysis of these, these applications, we can see that there's shared preferences sets that are pretty much uh, self-descriptive. Self and they have URLs, URL injection, they have uh, delayed SWS, and they have SWS packet, etc. So the names are pretty straightforward. But also, another interesting thing is that the HTTP requests uh, are pointing to a certain path, and this path was included into the default panel that the Russian forum user gave. So the users modified the Trojan but they didn't change the, the panel. So if they execute it into an Android machine, they will still connect to an endpoint which always ends in private, that check panel at PHP. And we also have the DNS resolutions and the IP address, which was resolving too in case we didn't catch it in time. And another sample, which is a different one, but from the same family, we don't have as much details from the sample in this picture. But we can see that it connects to a different domain, which resolves to a different IP address, but the command and control points to the same endpoint. So we have private slash check panel at PHP. So there's a common point between the sample that we saw before and the one that we are seeing now. And there are samples taken uh, completely at random, so there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing I did to, to get them, especially. And now we're getting a third sample, which also follows the same path, but instead uh, has some variations. So they changed the check panel that PHP to tac tac that PHP and to add log that PHP. Uh, the uh, add log PHP is included into the default panel that you're given in the Russian forum, and tac tac uh, is also included. Into a modif in, in a modified version of this, of this Trojan. So we have common points to search for, and they are not based on, on static attributes. So, uh, 
So the thing is that before it was not possible to search through this data. It was being indexed, but it was not able to be searched. But now we can do it, and I will show you how. The thing is that in VirusTotal now we have the, the multi sandbox project, which basically uh, contains different sandboxes for, for deep, different operative systems, and we are always welcoming new ones. So we have antivirus information, but we're now interested also into the dynamic behavior. So we have our own in house sandboxes, which is Troidy, the, car, the, the one you saw for Android. Then we have the Windows Sandbox, but we are testing an updated one. They are all in-house. And then we have uh, other sandboxes which are not related to us, but they are submitting information. So they are the Dr. Web Sandbox, the Tencent Sandbox, and the Cyber ADPT Sandbox. And we're always welcoming new ones. So in case, in, case uh, in the future there are new sandboxes, you will also be able to search through them. Since they all follow a, a, a specific format, you can search uh, through all of them without needing to know which sandbox you want to use. So to test this, this new feature, what I did was to write a simple script that removed the top domains from Alexa and, we, and checked the PHP extensions of URLs. And then uh, this, very this very basic function was used to remove uh, any false positives. And using the new API, the v3 version of, of VT, you can make relationships between files uh, and information from the dynamic analysis. And then we can query for a specific behavior, which in this case is the tac tac that PHP. So I gather a lot of samples using this query, and then I run it to this simple filter and, in, uh, and we also have this, well, I'll show that later, but basically in around two minutes running this script, I got around 300 URLs from Android malware, and they are all matching malicious domains. We have top domains, we have, uh, well, mostly have top domains, but we also have uh, uh, Russian domains and ORG domains, and all of them are trash trash ones, and we can see that the pattern is common between all of them. And that means that we are facing a, a bank bot one, but we couldn't see that in the static analysis. We can also search in here, we have search with contacted domains. So it is possible to search with, uh, also with activities, calls highlighted, DNS lookups, files deleted, text highlighted, etc and with the HTTP conversations, uh, shared preferences, and files open. Mm -hmm. And we can also find uh, associated samples to these domains, because before we just had the, we just have the, we just have the raw information, but now we can also find more related uh, information in a graphical way. And for example, using the domain that we saw before, uh, we can get this graph, and it was not only a single application communicating to this domain, but rather there were different bank bots with different hashes and, and icons, etc., which were pointing all to the same domain. And we will then, uh, and this one allow, allows us to find through dynamic, uh, through dynamic uh, analysis and through uh, graphical views uh, uh, related samples to this family. Uh, and also, we can find undetected samples, and I'll show you now how. Uh, since this one can be used in, as a query modifier, we can use various total to actually search through them. And this could help in increasing detections in case uh, an engine knows that this one is malware but it has not been detected, and they cannot do it through static analysis because it's so heavily obfuscated. So this these markers allows, allows, allows you to actually find uh, malicious samples through, through behavior. And for this sample, we're going to be using Red Alert Trojan, which basically visits a rogue site serving an Android application and queries the time API uh, for checking the UTC time and then queries an, an IP port 
server, an, an IP port uh, address schema, which is pretty simple. But the thing is that later, it queries a specific paths in, in this specific order. So at first, it will query STBI, SW, SY, SSL, and ECS. So once the device admin permission was requested, the, the sample will uh, communicate in this order with the command and control, and this will allow us, this will allow us to find uh, if this sample is a Red Alert Banking Trojan or not. And this, this is using the ST, this is an example where uh, a Banking Trojan, a Red Alert Trojan, connects to this IP address uh, with, the, with a port format and then to a slash STBI, as we mentioned before, and that's the initial request. So we are going to use this as a pattern for finding new ones. And we can also see it in the various total report in the behavior in the behavior tab. So we can see that it has connected to the time API, as we mentioned before, and it has also tried to connect to the STBI uh, path on the of the IP address. So we are into a red alert for sure, but there's no much, there's no more information that will tell us otherwise. So for example, in this case, we are searching with VTI uh, using the behavior modifier, which now indexes the dynamic reports. And we can search, for example, uh, if a specific, a specific engine has not detected it, or if the number of positives is below five or below 10 to, uh, to f uh, figure out new undetected samples. And well, this is the new GUI, so we are trying it. And we can also search the ones that have less than, uh, well, the ones that have zero positives. So these samples are red alert Trojans because we know that the behavior includes this path but no one, has, no one is detecting them, and they could be flagged by using the, the dynamic, dynamic reports feature. And this could also be applied for, for Windows malware. So I will give you a, a quick example because there is no more time. And TrickBot Trojan is a modular Trojan which basically installs a, a, ser a service to make sure it works on reboot. And this service, uh, usually has a strange name, which usually has a typo. So we can use this typo to actually search for malware that has is, that has called the service creator. Uh, well, the, ser the service is executable to create uh, a strange description. So in this case, it says Wi-Fi internet connection, and there's a typo. So th since it is misspelled, we are going to be using the service that uh, file and the typo to search for trickbot banking trojans, which we could not find with a static analysis. So in this case, I'm, also, I'm searching for undetected samples that are trickbot because of this behavior. And we can see that there's more than 1,000 files that are not found for this specific engine. So it could help us find samples that, have, that are clearly malware, but we are not able to, do, to detect them through uh, a static analysis. And that was it. 